I'm Reefa Thorpe Tracy. I live in Brighton in the UK. I am a coach, connector and um, consultant. I work mainly with women in digital and uh, I run various different networks for women, um, but also people of colour and LGBT people as well. Um, my reaction to the archetypes was I was sort of in denial about being a ruler at first and kind of did the test a few times and uh, thought, okay, I, may, I, I identified as an accumulator, definitely. I was like, yes, that sounds like me. I love to, to stash away my coins and think about where I'm going to make more money and uh, found it really hard to spend money on myself sometimes I felt really guilty about that and then my second the accumulator and nurturer were about the same and then the next one after that is celebrity so it felt a bit like they're all fighting around each other you know the wanting to be more of a ruler and a nurturer and I think sort of thinking about like real life people like 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 Beyonce was a, a, like probably a ruler, you know, and building your empire and being that person and not always uh, being liked as well. That was all kind of part of Money Boot Camp as well, you know, that kind of understanding that you're, you have to sort of be your true self, I think, was really important, I think. So many of us have suppressed that ruler part of ourselves because we were told we were bossy from a really young age. And I would love to hear, is that something that's happened to you? I actually had a whole career as a project manager bossing people about. <laughs> that was like what I was meant to do, it felt like. And it was only when I um, when I got my, my husband's a, a performer and I found myself really like jealous of like not being on stage and not having the microphone and not being you know, uh, in the front, in the, you know, in the f forefront of things. And my frustration was like, I don't, I had to find my voice. I had to find where I was supposed to be. And it took absolutely ages for me to understand that and um, experimenting with different things. And it was when I started doing events, that was where I thought, thought I, I could actually be in charge. But I did spend a lot of time like bringing in volunteers and, um, realizing that they wanted to maybe take over and then I had to really assert myself and go actually this is my thing and you're just playing you know like your players within my before my, my show <laughs> and and that's quite hard that's quite hard to do that and then realizing actually there are some people who want to help me achieve what I want to achieve I don't have to keep um, I mean it's great to have mentors and and, and coaches but I kept looking for someone else to tell me what I should be doing and it's only recently that I've really like gone oh actually I know what I'm doing I need people to help me and um Reefa were you were you like that as a kid as well yeah I was a lot of what you say in some of your um your your money boot cab work where you say about how um like I used to be the director. I used to get all my friends to like be, <laughs> be in my show and uh, put on plays and things. And um, yeah, I felt, yeah, I, there was a whole thing with um, always, I was always getting the lead for parts at primary school at, at uh, when I was a kid. But when the one time that I was a snow queen once, which is like that, uh, best part ever it felt like and uh, my mum didn't come to see me and it really affected me and I just thought there's no point to it being the lead because there's no one cheering me on and uh, it took me ages to kind of get over that but yeah probably that's why I retreated into the background maybe and it sounds like your celebrity was very suppressed for a long time too as it sounds like you're a celebrity kind of wants to come up a little bit, but that's probably something that you learned to dial down. Yeah, definitely. I think um, I have a sister and my mum maybe, maybe have said something like, well, you're good at everything. Like that was a bad thing. And uh, someone else had to 
be pushed into the limelight more than me. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I noticed that with some of the other rulers too. There's this real sense of like, or you have to learn to take your turn. And and I think too, being British is something that that comes up a lot too of going, no, you're not allowed to skip ahead, but that's what rulers want to do. We want to find the shortcuts. We want to find the hacks. We want to go really fast. And then if you've got that double whammy of, no, 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 you're good at everything. So take, wait your turn. And then being British as well of going, no, you have to queue. <laughs> you have to queue and wait your turn. It's like, that can be quite hard. And that's, I think that double whammy of the ruler um, celebrity of don't overshine, don't overshadow other people, don't overtake other people. Where do you think that might've come up in your life? Oh God, loads of things. Like I, I won a competition at secondary school and um, they it was a national writing competition and no one, no one made me do the competition. And I was only, the only one in the group of kids that won um, who didn't go to a private school um so it was a class thing probably and I remember my family just being sort of like embarrassed by it all and my school they made an award especially for the, because it was like national recognition and they never had this before so they made this difficult for me but me being absolutely mortified about the whole thing in a, a school assembly and me sort of pretending it wasn't me and nobody went up to get the award for me. And I was just like, yeah, they must be talking about somebody else. You know, <laughs> it was really um, odd. Um, yeah. And I think probably as a girl as well, it, or just the kind of, you just didn't want to stand out in my school because even being bright or good at anything was just seen as a, uh, seen as uh, I don't know you were too posh or too good for for other people where has that created some dial down for you like has it ever come up and um business life wherever you know where has that come up of going I'm just going to dial this down it could have been in a mastermind it could have been in a group it could have been with a mentor where you're just like oh I'm, I'm actually not going to put my hand up for this or I'm not going to do it um Karen, while you're fresh, do you want to jump in and then Rafi can go on this one? I think um, certainly with teachers or coaches in the past, I think I went through three different kinds of coaches where I knew what I, need, what I needed, but I needed that validation and it felt like, what am I doing here? And they would sort of get annoyed with me because maybe I've outgrown them or their teachings or their things. Um, and it was only probably later that I, um, oh, I don't know, I just felt like resentful sometimes of like people kind of me paying them, but they're getting more out of the relationship than I than I am. Um, but then knowing that's just kind of learning that, you know, it's something I needed to work on that I needed to find out things for myself or work in bigger groups rather than expect one person to be everything for me it's it's an odd one so yeah uh, having um the communities of like the money bootcamp community helps me because there's lots of different voices validating and having different kinds of opinions about things rather than expecting some sort of messiah to come and rescue you you know and that sort of dynamic can be a bit odd although i really like the way that i've um change the way that um I do coaching in, in these short sharp shocks you know like three hour blast rather than then getting sort of like therapy getting attached to me that's where I'm at at the moment um but it's taken me a lot long time to kind of work out um you know this the structure not doing it the way that other people expect me to do it and it it becoming a kind of like parent teacher or parent parent or teacher relationship having to do things other people's way what about you Rifa talk talk to me about hiring team support receiving yeah I think when when I had to when I had full-time work and I was uh had teams to manage I could be a bit too bossy and a bit too kind of you know this is how it's got to be and 
or I try and manipulate people maybe and um, you know use charm to sort of get things done but when it came to sort of doing kind of and I still have this with like different groups where I um, lead but I have volunteers that help me I find that I just have to let go and it's a, it, and let people help um, with simple things you know and not try and micromanage that's probably my my worry um and again with that Beyonce thing you know the the thinking about all the shows that she does and how she has to sort of she sees every uh bead that's sewed onto her costumes you know that's <laughs> exhausting so just trying to allow people to help you rather than thinking I have to do it all myself it's taken a while and also just trusting people as well just to get on with it because yeah I've I'm still quite a control freak about my like the bills and I'm the one where the the money comes out in my account in my relationship and uh, I probably my husband doesn't even know um <laughs> what all our utility supplies are but I have to I have to keep hold of that because it's really important to me to know where the money's coming from and and that the bills are being paid but outside, yeah, I try and let people help me a bit more. Um, what other challenges is your ruler bringing up? For, or before, think about before SMA, um, what were your challenges that your ruler was bringing up for you in your, in your business? I think I had like a worthiness worry, you know, like decide, like kind of new, like I was given that snow queen role you know then they said oh she's small but we'll give her a big crown like a tall crown and the kind of knowing that I was this arc like knowing that was my role in life when I was really young but just forcing it down you know because nobody else was appreciating it or understanding it or being the archangel Gabriel was like bigger than Mary or you know in the nativity when I'm four and it's stuff that you have to go to therapy for isn't it it's like it's like you you're you're not allowed to step into that until I don't know when you have to you know it's it's trying to unlearn loads of societal conditioning that you're allowed to do anything and I hear it all the time with women and then it's finally sort of realizing when I first started my business that everybody's fears come up and they're not yours so you're my mum's like are you allowed to do this are you allowed to you know charge money for things shouldn't surely everything should be free and then having to kind of learn all of this new stuff and find new role models all the time like chillpreneur is what I've always thought that's how it should be <laughs> how it should be it should be easy but not having any role models to show that to me. If you, if I ever did any, or if there was ever any role model that I liked, they always had like Frida Kahlo, tragic endings, you know, Lady Di, tragic ending. It's like, stay safe, stay small. And that probably goes across all the archetypes that I have, you know, just be quiet and then you'll stay safe so it's yeah it's really tough and I'm just feel really grateful and lucky that I even know any of you <laughs> so <laughs> otherwise where, where where would we even be yeah it's been a journey is how are your other archetypes connecting with your ruler do you have things that make your ruler sabotages harder do some of them cancel out like tell me about Tell me about your combination and how it shows up in good and bad ways. I think I think I'm probably still in that um, shiny object syndrome mentality that I really still find it difficult to say no to people when they say there's some interesting project. There's maybe no money in it, or but it's going to take up loads of time. And um, I was doing a radio show every two two hours every week. Um, absolutely loved doing it and it was lots of good learnings but hardly anyone was probably listening to it but it was like so much fun for me to do and you know I will beat myself up over thinking I'm spending lots of time doing fun projects when I could be doing more on my business and making more money and doing more launches but I do um yeah I I think that sometimes 
the part of me that um, the I can't remember which one it is now. I think it's celebrities wanting to have pleasure, you know, and allowing yourself to have pleasure is the thing that I fluctuate with, you know, like, uh, well, the accumulator doesn't want you to have fun. And, <laughs> and it wants you to just be thinking about your business all the time, but actually, you can have some fun. So I've done, I try and do time audits every so often and cut out things that aren't fun. But yeah, it's taken me a while to sort of say no to things or, or doing that thing of like what you were saying about being good at things, not over planning as well. So if there's something, I just need to show up and do the thing and go and not do all the kind of stress thinking about it or the over planning or the creating the most beautiful slides possible for something that doesn't need require it. And um and basically passing all of that on to my clients now and realizing that a lot of people who are attracted to the work I do are perfectionists or are um stopping themselves because they're not feeling worthy when they have so much to give and they're already at the top of their game and they're just working out how to leave a legacy rather than like building another business or another thing that they think they need to do but you know one one big thing I think is um one of the status symbols of of success is to have like a fancy house and I manifested so the alchemist is there somewhere in my I thought I'd be an alchemist and a connector because I do events and all this stuff um but I'd already manifested this house that I have in Brighton, kind of out of thin air because people think I was flaky when I was even buying property that I was able to do it myself and I was real control freak about it. And it's a house that's similar to the house that I grew up in. And um, it's kind of like now I, I realise that's that's not even that important to me. What's more important is clearing debts and being mortgage free in the UK is like, amazing you know like it's unheard of to be able to do this so anyway it's it's okay to change your goals is another thing so it's like oh you know we can have different goals anyway I've um it's just learning about yourself it's kind of even difficult sometimes to admit things to yourself so I find it really interesting. So you've got the ruler accumulator, right? So the ruler's like, no pleasure, just work. The accumulator's like, no pleasure. We have to save money and we have to pay off that mortgage. But then you have your celebrity in there going, well, actually, guys, it would be really nice to live a life of pleasure and luxury and fabulousness. So how is that showing up of going work, work, work? to make money, save money? And then how is that celebrity getting heard or not being heard? Well, it's simple things like, um, like when you, when you said about people loving how you don't um, sometimes get things wrong. Um, I remember being so impressed by you because you would rock up to your calls with no makeup on sometimes, you know, and, and, and I was like, this is the life, this is choice, this is how it should be. However, you know, you are so glamorous and beautiful and I felt like that's part of the symbols, isn't it? When you talked about blow drying your hair, like getting the false eyelashes, you know, like doing all of that, that's the celebrity. And again, I remember just making that conscious decision. It doesn't have to be hard, looking, looking better on camera, having a better light. All of those things help me understand I can be that celebrity part of my, myself you know um and it's small things that I suddenly go well everybody gets their nails done I, I I'm allowed to get my nails done if I wanted to you know <laughs> micro lady so I can do that you know and that sort of little things that I kind of think it's it's fine now to do it you know but did you have to convince your accumulator to say but if you got microblading then you don't have to spend money on the thing or you don't have to spend time and then same with the nails of like how did you convince your accumulator side to spend money on those things yeah it's I'm always if it's a bargain so that's how I get away with it so there's a half price woman at the moment in Brighton who's doing microblading so I'm like okay I'm allowed to do it 
<laughs> and I, I still, my, my family, they love designer clothes, but I'm like, when you said about somebody buying you, a, um, your partner buying you a, a handbag, I was like, I, I spent a lot of time thinking I should get a handbag because that's symbolic. And there are some ladies in the, in our, in the money boot camp that they had, they get the good handbags. And I'm like trawling through the internet, trying to find a bargain Chanel bag or I'm like, and then I end up like getting something. I'm like carrying my stuff in a like a free, a free um, uh, tote bag at the moment. And it's just like, you just have to, I just have to find my thing of what it is. And it's usually something like an experience or holiday or a, um getting my hair done you know more regularly is not necessarily a thing um and just acknowledging that's my, those aren't my status symbols you know I have one maybe nice bag but I never seem to use that either and and uh comparing myself to other people there was a there's somebody there's sometimes I get mistaken for other people who look similar to me in my day and I realized I'm not really a floral person I'm much more of a leather jacket like red shoes sort of person I'm not floor why am I wearing floor <laughs> where does that even come from like uh, you know so I yeah there are other coaches who have amazing hair and I thought it's not this doesn't have to be like the celebrity doesn't have to be what you think it should be I think absolutely and when I had the celebrity round table um the thing that everyone had in common everyone had a bold lip which you have, Rifa, you have got the bold lip. And I, because I actually wore lipstick for that one because I was really nervous. I was like, they're all going to judge me. And so I was like, I'm going to wear a bold lip. And it was a really interesting experience hanging out with some of my celebrity friends recently of how effortless it is for them to be that celebrity. Whereas I think if you've got it as your two or three, it takes a little bit more work to do it and you need to acknowledge your other archetypes. As you said, you need to acknowledge, well, my accumulator needs a bargain or my ruler needs to hear how this is going to help them in business, you know, to stand out or to, you know, to be better. But you know what I did this on the weekend? I bought um, a pair of um, secondhand designer boots and they're still so expensive buying things secondhand on their designer sites. But I was like, okay, that's how I'm going to acknowledge. I mean, celebrity is pretty low for me, but it's just like, that's how I'm going to do that part of myself is I wouldn't be able to buy it full price. It would just be too, uh, I don't know, still not, not right for me. Um, talk, talk to me about passive income or, you know, challenges around your business model or challenges around passive income and making things easier. I, I have such a funny time with this because I've got some online courses. I've got um, audiences and lists in different sectors and what seems to work for me really well is they pay for events one-off things people give donations but I get funding and I, or I get sponsorship in lumps of money which is fantastic or I get a big lump of money and I have to do hardly any work for it as in it doesn't seem like a lot of work for me um, in time but when it comes to like ongoing groups or membership models or I think and this is totally my own mindset it doesn't work for me and I've tried different kinds of um, Facebook ad programs and all different kinds of courses I have trouble finishing my like other people's courses so when you said about um, you know what makes you go uh, with like a course or a program I'm like sold you know I read the email I'm sold with everything and then I have to really stop myself because I know I'm not going to finish it but I hear you when you've said in the past you know in other programs like you're going to get what you need so sometimes I just think can I not just bypass like doing all the rules <laughs> that everybody says works for them with the online courses and the membership groups and everything else that seems to work for everybody else with their online businesses. Oh, I know in the middle of lockdown, I went back to corporate work and I was like, what am I doing? However, there's something in me still, my accumulator probably that is still happy getting some income, but uh, sorry regular income while all the other stuff feels like fun and extra and bonuses and you know 
and also sorry like I was I felt like I was trying to um go to the membership model or go to uh selling online courses before I'd even really captured all the individuals you know um doing the just one-to-one coaching I hadn't even really exploited that as a as a means so once I honed that all in set a price got a new website felt like I had a thing that I really enjoy one-to-one I haven't burnt myself out doing that yet and I felt like let's just charge a premium for that and see what happens that's when I was like oh okay this is how I should do it rather than like trying to do all the things but anyway as you can hear from my voice I'm like I feel like I should be doing all of the things you know but yeah I'm I feel like I don't know I feel keep I every time I do money boot camp I'm always like I should be doing I should be on the the next level or there's another program that I nearly bought recently because she promised a lot she was saying you're gonna if you're earning 5k a month now I'm gonna get you to the next 10k I'm gonna get you to a million and I was like no you're not because I'm gonna sell myself until I feel ready for the next bit and also you know what what I knew that I can't I can't force myself to do the courses because that's the bit, isn't it? That I know the knowledge is out there and it will come at the right time. And I need to just chill and just enjoy what I'm doing right now. I I think that was interesting, though, what you said about the pandemic, because I'm sure a lot of other accumulators felt that same way, you know, and and that would have panicked your accumulator part to go, oh my God, there's a global pandemic. I need to get some corporate work to feel safe. And then, you know, once you feel safe, then you can, then you can create, right? Is that what happened? You were just like, security, security. Totally. And I think as well, I've, I've, I've resented, this is an awful cycle, resented hiring, say, a, a couple who, a couple of people who said, I'll help you create your online courses and we had a lot of meetings and I spent maybe 2k on just the meetings and I was like so it's been great having these chats but you haven't actually helped me create any of this content and then feeling annoyed with myself because I knew that what I wanted to do was like hand over and go you do it all for me whereas that's not how it works you know and that's that was me almost saying as well to myself that I have to be the face of my own business you know I have to make it reefer you know reefer.co.uk not this other business name that I had you know all of these things it feels like sometimes I'm like surely by now I should know the answer but the answer is always changing isn't it because you're growing into yourself Absolutely. But I think there's something there, what you were saying about that I haven't even done, exploited the one-to-one work. And then I'm, I think that is such a rule of thing to go, you've probably been shamed for saying you can't, you know, run before you walk, but it's like, but you are allowed to, you know, you don't have to do it like someone else and go, okay, well, I have to get an expert in this and then I can graduate to this. It's like, you can skip parts you know what I mean like it's okay for you to just go yeah one to one's not for me or yeah I've done that like I think just because rulers master things so quickly um but there's still that sense of I have to take my turn a little bit yeah yeah I I don't even know anymore you know I feel like um I don't know I don't know if I'm hungry enough either you know because it's safer to get the passive in, uh, not that the job feels like the passive income the job feels like oh it's just <laughs> which is weird because it's not that hard I walk up somebody puts some money in my bank account and it's regular so weird whereas me sitting thinking oh I'd quite like to make some tarot cards or something <laughs> it's like oh I'm gonna have to like design some things and do the do you know what I mean it's like creating hard things for myself that's sometimes how it feels doing the thing that other people think is passive 
Does that, that make makes sense? total yeah. sense yeah. to me. And I never connected that before that for accumulators, a safe job is, it is like passive income because it comes in all, without you having to do anything. And I think the thing that I've noticed about the accumulators is that they're very skeptical about the idea of passive income because they wouldn't necessarily pay for those things themselves. They're like, but I would just create that myself. Why would I, why would I buy it from, why would someone buy it from me when they can just do it themselves or find the information for free? It just doesn't make sense. And so I've never heard that before that having a job feels like that. <laughs> that makes sense. Really bad. And that makes total sense. I feel like w- working quite hard at the marketing and launches for a course feels more hard for me however I probably do that amount of work for events but there's a finite you know ending to it and um, I enjoy it I enjoy those events so it's a different kind of thing maybe I don't know I haven't cracked that nut yet I think it's the predictability because that's what I hear from the accumulators they go but tell me what the result is exactly going to be and you go well you don't you know and so they're like well why would I put in all this work and do a launch when I have no idea what the outcome is going to be whereas if I go to work for a certain amount of time I know what my paycheck is going to be so I think it is that predictability of just going you can't guarantee it so why would I why would I do it and I the other thing about the launches thing I mean I did a whole thing last year and I um my first launch and I was like oh well I I broke even and then I didn't, and then I was like, on to the next thing. I didn't like to do what, you know, build on that, which is kind of odd, I think. But that's my shiny object syndrome, which I still probably haven't sorted out yet. Well, yeah, and I think there is that rule of sense too of going, well, I've done that now, so I've done it, you know, instead of going, yeah, okay, I've, I've done it now. What, what can we do to improve it? Or how can we leverage that even more? Um, no, I think that's really fascinating stuff, Rifa. Thank you so much. And I know the accumulators will will definitely get a like an aha, a smaha around that, around how that feels more like the passive option. <laughs> so I want to hear like what really turns you off about like what's those immediate red flags for you? What are those things that help you make that decision? Um, yeah, anything else around that? Yeah, I I remember um, I spent like. Th- uh, quite a, a lot of money for me uh, to for one to one session with someone, and she told me one small thing, and that helped me with my whole business. And I made that money back so like to, so much more, to, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of pounds more. And um, but I was full of buyer's regret afterwards because I didn't get like she gave me handwritten notes. Now I do handwritten notes now because I learned that it wasn't that she needed to present it back to me in a like a beautiful presentation or anything. Now at the time I had some things around the value, you know, like what was it she was going to produce for me, and I think I have that. I've had that for a while with like summer courses that that everything's filmed beautifully, and I learned so much from watching you over the years, you know, like. And, and you showing the behind the scenes of like how you first started making courses, that that helped me make my first courses, you know, that they're not, they don't have to be beautifully pro- professional, um, you know, and just doing it is what's important. And then what um, I have to really watch out for myself now is I'm so, uh, let's say, susceptible but you I know that these are marketing techniques that work on that scarcity of like I'm going to miss out if I don't buy it now and um but also the recommendation so if I don't know that person I am you know when you've recommended people I'm more likely to get involved with that that particular um the provider but at the same point I'm always like what is how much is it going to be am I going to do the course am I going to and overthinking it until right to the last like this is the last time to buy the course before before this price ends I, and then I always miss the first like prize money but, but the first bonuses and the first thing and then I'm like oh no I really have to do it now because and then I've got the higher price um 
that really works on me. So I've had to unscribe from a lot of people because I've always bought these courses. Um, because once I'm in with the first course, I'm hooked. I'm like, yeah, give me that, give me that stuff. But I do know that the things that really help me are if you say you're going to give me my money back if I change my mind in two weeks and the thing about um because that's just authenticity and, and niceness and I think that's great the second thing that I um always uh feel happy about is that you can look at that content beyond the lifetime of the call uh, beyond you know anytime you like you've got access to it because I'm continually going back to boot camp certainly and I never finish the course so if I think oh I just dip into that course then I'm I'm you know feeling like I've got my money's worth <coughs> and I'm always getting some, something out of hearing something again differently or doing the same exercises again and again and I think when I very first did boot camp that was the first maybe the second course that was a big investment for me I was there even though the your times were late latish for me in the UK I was like committed as that accumulator I was going to do the course you know I was see, going to both calls on the same day and stuff like that because I didn't want to miss out on anything that I was going to get my money's worth um, I just want to, again, thank you both for your time. And I just thought, I mean, I could go on forever with this because you guys are so fascinating. But is there just one little message I'd love to hear from each of you? Anyone who's thinking of joining um, SMA this round, like what's, what's your message for them? Doing this course is going to help you really step into the true expression of who you are and why you're on the planet to do what you're doing. That's what I think. Well, thank so, are you a ruler, a connector, or a maverick? Hang on, maybe you're more of a romantic or a celebrity. Take the money personality quiz right now and find out which of the eight money archetypes you are. And then I'm gonna teach you how to profit from your strengths and make money in your business based on your natural personality. Click below and find out more.